Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Tabletop Simulator. Today we're playing a game of Spirit Island Solo. Spirit Island is a fully cooperative game, so it's not really that different with multiple players than it is solo. And I'm not usually much for co-op games, but um, both the, the art and the, the components and the theme of this one kind of caught my eye. And after playing a couple of games with it of it with Elise and then a little bit by myself, I think it's pretty cool. This is a pretty neat game. So the theme of this game is that a colonial power has come over to a new land. Uh, they have quote unquote discovered a land. I'm not sure if that's the appropriate word when there's already a bunch of people living there, but that's the one we're using. Uh, and then they're going to exploit the new land for resources. And if you've played a lot of board games, you're probably already thinking that you know what's going on here because there's a lot of board games that have that as the theme. But the twist here is that you are not playing as the colonists. The colonists are the bad guys in this game. It's almost always the other way around. Uh, but in this game, the colonists are the bad guys. But you're also not playing as the people of the land. You're playing as the spirits of the land that the people live in. So, today we're playing as the Thunder Speaker. There's actually a pretty large array of possible spirits that represent all kinds of different things. You know, spirits of the land and the, and the wildlife the spirits of the beasts of the place, even uh, kind of unusual things like this guy is the bringer of dreams and nightmares. He is like a manifestation of the dreams and nightmares, not just of the natives, but also of the invaders. And there's a lot of like, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. You can see there's another line of them over here. Uh, but we're very like, we're part of the legends of the native people who are called the Dahan. Uh, so our, all of our powers are very Dahan focused. We're all about helping the Dahan fight off the invaders. <clears throat> Rather than using our magic to fight them off ourselves, which is what a lot of the other spirits do. Um, so just so you can read the board state real quick here, these white sort of mushroomy looking pieces, I think these are supposed to be huts. You can see the iconography for them shows a door. So these are where the Dahan currently live. And there are six Dahan tribes, I guess. Uh, then you have some invaders, explorers, cities and towns, and then the orange discs are my presence. Uh, we'll use presence as, we'll use presence to determine the range at which our powers can affect things. As you can see like on this card, the middle line there, the middle area where it says range, one with that arrow means within one of a place where you have presence. So that power could target here or here or here or here or here. Right, because we, those are all within one of this presence. Um, I'm not going to explain all of the rules right up front. We're going to go through the first couple of turns, and then by then you'll have you'll have the idea of it. So the first thing we do each turn is we grow. We have a spirit phase, and the first part of the spirit phase is growth. So we pick one of these three options. We can either reclaim all of our cards, which means take all of the cards from the discard pile, put them back in your hand, and then gain two new power cards. Or we can distribute some of our presence over the island. Or we can distribute less of our presence, but also gain energy. Energy is what you spend to play your cards. You can see each card has an energy cost in the upper left. Um, in addition, we're going to get some, in addition to this four energy that we might get if we pick this growth option, we're going to get this income uh, per turn. So you can see we don't really get a lot of energy. Uh, this card that costs three is a thing we're not going to be able to play all that often. And some cards are even more expensive than the ones we started with. Um, when we add presence to the board, we take it off of one of these two lines. And these lines determine, first of all, our income, our energy per turn. And secondly, the number of cards we're allowed to play for turn. And obviously, as we uncover, uh, now I could play two cards. If I pulled these two up, now I could play three cards in a turn. In addition, on, in some places on our board, there are these symbols. And you'll notice those symbols are on the left side of the cards as well. Those are called elements. Um, they don't do anything by themselves, but there are many, uh, many powers like these two that we have printed on our board that only do things if you have certain groups of elements available to you that turn. And it only it looks at the cards that you have played that turn. So, like the gather the warriors power, doesn't do anything normally. It has no non-conditional text. But if we have a red symbol, then we get to do this stuff this power if we have two yellow symbols and an orange symbol we get to do this line so um first of all it's important to uncover these symbols on our income but secondly it's important to get more card plays available so you can have more symbols active at the same time uh, finally before we start going here let's talk about our special rules 
the Dahan carry our presence with them, like literally. So whenever Dahan move around, they can carry each Dahan can carry one of our presence discs with him to his new location. And whenever Dahan are killed by invaders ravaging the land, uh, we lose presence. You know, we're sworn to defend them, and they uh, their their belief in our power to aid them will waver if uh, we keep letting them get murdered all over the place. So we lose the game by one, either losing all of our presence discs. If we have no presence on the island, we die. Or two, allowing the island to be blighted out. This is a disc of blight. Blight is bad. Uh, when blight gets added to the island, it gets added off of this card. As it says here, when there's no blight here, we flip the card over, and the other side of the card is going to be bad for us. And then we're going to place some more blight on it, however much it says. And if that side of the card runs out of blight, then the island dies. Basically, we, we lose the game that way. We win the game by removing all of the explorers and towns and cities. But the only reason that the victory condition is that difficult is because the invaders don't properly fear us yet. So as we do things that generate fear, such as destroying their towns and cities or playing cards like this one that just generate fear, we'll start playing fear cards and we'll eventually uh, move the terror level up and make our victory conditions easier. There's a lot of mechanics going on. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in this game, uh, but I, it's really cool. I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. So let's get going. Let's first of all pick our growth for the turn. Now we're only going to get one energy per turn or one energy during the income step as it happens right now. So we actually won't be able to play most of our cards. It might be worth adding a presence and gaining four energy just so that we have a little bit of a bank to play with for future turns. Um, we need to get rid of some invaders. Hmm, I'm not really sure what the smartest thing to do is here. Oh, I should mention, our invaders are the Kingdom of England. So they add, uh, there, there are a bunch of different, there's four different invading forces and they each add some different rules. We're playing with level one Kingdom of England because I've not really played this game very many times. I'm not great at it yet. Uh, so I didn't want to set the difficulty too high. Uh, so the effects of that are, first of all, there's an additional loss condition. If there are ever seven towns or cities in, the, in a single land, and when it says a land, what it means is a space on the board. Uh, if there are ever seven or more towns and cities in a single land, the invaders win. They've established a new capital, and it won't be possible to drive them out anymore. Uh, and also, we have this game effect, Indentured Servants Earn Land. So whenever they take a build action, it affects lands without invaders if they're adjacent to at least two buildings before the build action. That doesn't mean a whole lot to you now, but trust me, it will soon. Uh, after the first turn or two, everything should be perfectly clear. So, uh, we need to grow. I think I am going to do this option. So we're going to add one presence and we're going to gain four energy. And I think the presence I want to add is this one so that we can get more card draws. So we have to add a presence to a land that is within one distance of a currently existing pre presence. Um, I think let's put it here. And the reason I want to do that is because now we are adjacent to all of the lands on the board. A lot of our powers are one range. Um, so we want to be sure that we're able to affect the whole board. And then we will get four energy. Plus one energy for our income, because now it is time for this. So we can play up to two cards, and we have five energy with which to play. The Manifestation of Power and Glory uh, has to target... It has zero range, so it has to be in a land with presence. And it has to target a land that has Dahan in it. Uh, and it will allow the Dahan to deal damage to stuff in the land, and it will be, uh, it's very important. It's a very powerful ability, uh, one that we will, uh, we will need to use very carefully, though. So I'm going to play it, and hopefully it will become clear why uh, in a minute, once you know how the game works a little better. So we have a yellow symbol, an orange symbol, and a purple symbol available to us. If we generate one more yellow, we'll be able to destroy some towns for free. So why don't we try to do that? We have three cards in our hand with yellow on them. We don't want to play Words of Warning this turn, though. I think we want to save Words of Warning. So I'm going to also play Voice of Thunder. And hopefully this will all become a little bit clearer 
uh, as we go on here. So we're going to, the combined cost of our cards is three. So we've left ourselves a little bit of a, a bank to play with. That's good. The energy persists from turn to turn. And it will be important for us to bank every once in a while because our cards are generally more expensive than our income allows for. So that is our playing card step. So after the uh, the spirit phase, which is the name for that combined group of actions we just did, we enter the fast phase. All powers have a speed. You can see in this middle row on the on the card, uh, the leftmost symbol is the speed. There are blue turtle cards, which are slow, and red bird cards, which are fast. The difference between slow and fast powers is that if uh, we play all of our fast powers right after the spirit phase, then the invaders get their turn and they do a bunch of stuff. And then slow powers are after the invader's turn. So when you're playing a fast power, you're doing stuff to the board right now. When you're playing a slow power, you're trying to read the board state as it will exist later in the turn and affect that. Which is part of why I didn't explain what these powers do. Because without knowing the rules, you guys can't know what the game state will look like. But just trust me, I think I did an okay thing here. So we don't have any fast powers at all. So we're going to move right to the invader phase. So, the first thing that happens during the invader phase is the Blighted Island step. If this card was on its other side, it would have a thing that it does to us at the beginning of each invader phase. That's not happening. Next is events. That's not listed here because this is the base game board and the events are from the expansion. But this is when events happen. So, Wave of Reconnaissance. Because we're at stage 1, Terra level 1, we do that top effect. So, when we explore this turn, we will add an additional explorer to each land explored. Okay, we'll keep this, like, right here, so I remember that. Oh, I did not mean to drop it in there. We'll keep it right here, so I remember to do that. Then, invaders are stricken. They do not ravage in lands with the yellow tokens or the blue tokens. Yellow tokens represent disease. Blue tokens rep represent internal strife amongst the invaders. Sadly, uh, that's not particularly relevant here, because there is no ravage happening this turn. And then there is a retreat. On each board, push two to Han from a land with a city to a land without a city. Okay. So when it says board, what it means is this whole thing. When you play with multiple players, you'll play with a larger number of boards, and you can see their designs so they, like, tessellate together. Um, when you're playing with one, just one spirit, you play with just one board. So on our board, we have to push them to Han from a city to a land that doesn't have a city. I think we'll just shove this guy here. So push means, you know, it always tells you from a land. Push just means move thing to adjacent land. Okay, and that's that card. We'll leave that there so I remember to handle the explore correctly. Then we process fear. Every time we add fear, every time we gain fear, it goes into this pool. Whenever we empty the fear pool, all of it's in the generated fear spot, we put it all back into the fear pool, and then we pull a fear card over to this slot. And if there are cards in that slot, now is when we will play them. Uh, obviously not relevant this turn. Then we Ravage. There's no card in the Ravage slot, so there's no Ravage this turn. Next turn there will be one. Then we build. In each land of the shown type, the displayed type, uh, if there are invaders, they will build a city if there are more towns than cities currently in the space. Otherwise, they will build a town. So here, there were not more towns than cities. There were zero of each, so we make a town. Here, there are more towns than cities, so we make a city. And then we explore. Wetlands. So in each land of this type, we place an explorer if there is a uh, building, a town or a city in the space, or if the town, if the city, um, if the space is adjacent to a space with a town or city, or if the space is coastal, you know, new ones are always coming in. So unfortunately, uh, explorers in both of the wetlands, and then because of this wave of reconnaissance effect, we add an additional explorer to each explored land. This is bad. We're getting further and further from winning here. Yeah, each land explored. Okay. And then finally, we move the cards over. So next turn, there will be a ravage in the sands. There will be building in the wetlands. And then the turn after that, there will be a Ravage in the Wetlands. So you can see they uh, they build up in a way that's predictable, uh, but also it's terrifyingly fast. All right, so now we move into the slow phase, where we play our slow powers. We have three slow powers available to us. We have the Manifestation of Power and Glory, the Voice of Thunder, and then Lead the Furious Assault. So the first thing I want to do is Voice of Thunder. 
within one range of our uh, power. We target a land and we push up to four Dahan from that land. I'm going to... Hmm. We need... We need to push some Dahan from this land to here. I'm just going to push one. And then remember, when uh, when Dahan move, they can carry our discs with them. So I think that guy's going to carry this disc. Is this what I want? Yeah, I think so. It's a shame. Lead the Furious Assault isn't actually going to end up being terribly relevant here. But I think we, we have the right group of powers. So we can push up to four Dahan when we do that. Do I want to push all of them? Uh, let me check the rule book real quick here. Do I have to push them all to the same place is my question. Because if I do, I'm not going to move that guy. But if we have the ability to push him to here instead, that could be, that could be interesting. Because we want to have Dahan where there are invaders. Yeah, I guess we want to leave him here in either case. So I'll look this up later if it becomes relevant. Uh, yeah, I think we want him here so that he can potentially fight those explorers later. So we didn't get a lot of value out of Voice of Thunder, but we needed to move the Dahan and our presence so that we could get the maximum value out of Manifestation of Power and Glory. So, uh, range zero, target a land with Dahan in it. First of all, just generate a fear. Cool, free fear. Then, each Dahan deals damage equal to the number of your presence in the target land. So each of these three Dahan are going to deal two damage. Uh, explorers have one health, towns have two, cities have three. So we're dealing six damage, we're just gonna wipe this place out. Explorer dead, town dead, city dead. And, that generates fear. Every time you destroy a town, you generate a fear. Every time you destroy a city, you generate two fear. So we've drained the fear pool. We get a fear card. And then everything goes back in. So we change terror level. Uh, there's two more cards before the terror level goes to two. And then there's four cards before the terror level goes to three after that. And then there's another three cards down there. And if we get all of the fear cards played, we just immediately win the game. The invaders are too stricken with terror to remain in the land. So now we could play, we still have uh, lead the furious assaults effect up because we do have two yellow and an orange. It lets us destroy one town for every two Dahan in target land. Unfortunately, I was not able to get another Dahan into this land. That's what I was kind of hoping to do. So I guess for now we're done. So these powers go to the discard pile, which we'll just make over here. And then we start the process over again. So we can grow, or we are required to grow. We, we must pick a growth. Let's see here. Uh, so each of our uh, innate powers have the ability that if you have four eggplant emoji element, you can play them as a fast power instead of a slow power. And since this one destroys stuff, it can be super relevant to play it fast. In order to get to four purples, we're going to have to either play four cards or play three cards, plus unveil this permanent purple that's on our uh, energy track. So we could... We could do this thing where we get to add two presents to go up to three card plays right now, and then at some point in the future unveil this. Because obviously getting the purple right now is not super relevant. Getting the three card plays right now, I guess, is also not super relevant since we actually can't play that many cards. I suppose... Let's see here. We're going to get one energy, which is just enough for us to play both of our very good cards. Um... Yeah, these are pretty good cards. So we definitely... We're actually already set for stuff we want to do this turn. We have enough energy, we have enough plays. So we're just building for the future. And in general, my experience is that when you're building for the future, what you want to do is add a lot of presents to the board as quickly as you can. 
So let's go ahead and do this. So within two range of a place where we already have presence, add a presence to a land with Dahan. Um, we'll do it here. And then within one range of a place where you have presence, add presence to a land with Dahan. We'll do that here. Because we're within one range of this. Yeah. Um, remember, Manifestation of Power and Glory requires us to have presence in the area, and there are lots of other cards that do too. Lead the Furious Assault. So it's important for us to make sure we have presence. We want to be represented basically wherever there's Dahan. Okay, and then we get our energy for the turn. And we're just going to play both of our cards, because it's a good idea to do that. You're just going to have to trust me. I already know what they do. I'm kind of cheating. I'm pretty sure... Yep, I dropped those into the three. I'm still kind of clumsy. Alright, so now we have a fast phase. This time both of our powers are fast. So, one of these lets us target a land within one range of our presence, gather a Dahan to that land, and then each Dahan in that land destroys an explorer. I think I'm going to target this land. We'll gather a Dahan here, and then each one of them kills an explorer. And that means that that land is not going to be built in. So we're doing a good job of controlling what's going on here. And then our other power, Words of Warning, Defend 3, during Ravage, Dahan and Target Land deal damage simultaneously with invaders. That'll mean a little bit more to you uh, when you see this first Ravage. You'll see how it works. For right now, we're just going to say, I'm marking this is the place where I'm doing that thing. These tokens don't have any rules, meaning they're just for reminders. The board state, particularly with multiple players, can get actually quite complex. Um, so it's good to have an indication of where stuff was targeted. Uh, the important thing here, well, we'll talk about it when we do the Ravage. So that's all of our powers. Let's go to the uh, the invader phase. So first, Blighted Island. There is the, the Blighted Island half of this card is not revealed yet. So next we have an event. Seeking the interior. In each coastal land, push one explorer, one land inland. Okay. So this guy gets pushed to here. That's not a big deal. That's fine. Because uh, we're still at stage one. And then Beast's Prowl. Each beast generates one fear if invaders are present and moves to an adjacent land if not. Well, our beast is in fact in a land with invaders, so he generates a fear. Good work, beast. And then Forsake the Barren Land. On each board, push two Dahan from a land with Blight to a land without Blight. I think, yeah, the only land with Blight has no Dahan in it right now. Okay, so that card was not a big deal. It generated us a fear. It was pretty cool. And now we get our fear card. So because we're still in Terra Level 1, each player may gather one town into a coastal land. Interesting. You know what? I wasn't going to, but I think I will now. Because this... No, no, you know what? I don't want to do that. It's, that's a May, right? May. Yeah, I'm not going to. I want this town right here. So that gets discarded. Unfortunately, it didn't really accomplish very much. Then we move to the invader stuff, and so now we ravage. So, in each land of the depicted type, sands in this case, each invader deals damage to both the land and the Dahan. Explorers deal 1 damage, towns deal 2 damage, cities deal 3 damage. Uh, a Dahan has 2 health, obviously, takes 2 damage, it dies. In addition, the land has an infinite amount of health, but any time uh, any Ravage action that deals 2 or more damage to a land will place a Blight onto that land. Um, it never places more than 1, it's not like, it's not, you know, 4 damage does not equal 2 Blight. But when a Blight goes down, a couple things happen. Number one, uh, the Blight removes one of our presence in that land, if we have presence in that land. And number two, if there's already a Blight in the land, you put down your Blight, and then you put down another Blight in an adjacent land. It sort of cascades outward. Uh, and if, there's, if you end up putting the Blight in an adjacent land that already has Blight, you get another cascade. And we really can't, there's not a lot of Blight on this card. We really can't afford that kind of stuff to happen too much. So, one damage and one damage and two damage. Four damage is being dealt here, both to the Dahan and to the land. But we have defend three. So that just makes it, next time the invaders deal damage, they deal that much less damage. So in fact, these invaders altogether deal one damage to the Dahan and to the land. 
he's injured, so we uh, flip him over to display that. One damage doesn't do anything to the land. Then, after the invaders deal all their damage, any Dahan who are in the territory fight back. So this guy's going to deal two damage, distributed as we want. I'm going to have him deal two damage to this town, which is enough to kill it, uh, which also generates a fear for us. And then they build in wetlands, any, any wetland where there is an invader. And remember, any wetland uh, invader build actions affect lands without invaders if they are adjacent to at least two uh, towns or cities before the build action. That still only affects lands of the chosen type, but for example, if there had been a city here, then this wetland would have built because of the nearby buildings. Okay, so we get a town, and then we get an explore action, mountain. Okay, the explorers come out. Any mountain that's adjacent to an invader building or the coast. Uh, fortunately, this one doesn't get anybody. We're doing a good job of controlling them already, and then the cards move over. Okay, and at this point, I mean, that's all the rules. You basically get it now. Um, I think this is a pretty cool game, and it the the complexity of it when you have multiple players, I think, is really satisfying. You have a lot of options, a lot of interesting decisions to make. Uh, speaking of interesting decisions, we are now out of cards, so I don't think our growth step this turn is much of an interesting decision, because I think we better reclaim our cards. We also don't have any power, like, you know, we, we just need options. As much as I would like to keep playing Presence, we desperately need to have cards in our hand. So, first of all, Reclaim. Secondly, gain power. Third, gain power. So the way this works is there's two decks of power cards. Minors and majors. When you gain a power card, you look at the top four cards of the deck, pick one of them to go into your hand, and then the other three go into the discard pile. The difference, the major differences between minors and majors is, first of all, majors are more powerful. Secondly, they tend to be more expensive. Uh, some majors have costs of up to like seven or eight. And third... When you learn a major power, you must forget a power you already know. So you have to take a power that's in your hand or currently in play or in your discard pile and remove it from the game entirely. Or actually, I think it goes into the appropriate discard pile, but that's the same. It's, it's, it's no longer available to you, anyway. I don't think we particularly want to forget any of our powers. I think all the powers we have now are good. And also, um, we couldn't afford to play most major powers. So we'll just go ahead and gain a minor power with this first gain. So let's see what we have here. Guardian Serpents. It's a fast power that targets a spirit at a beast token in one of target spirit's land. And if the spirit has a sacred site in that land, defend four there. A sacred site is anywhere where you have two discs of presence in the same place. So we have one of those. This is a sacred land for us. Razor Sharp Undergrowth. Destroy a an explorer and a Dahan at a wilds token. Defend two. So these are uh, these tokens. Let's talk about these real quick. Beasts don't do anything by themselves, but as you saw, like in this event, events often refer to them and make the make the beasts do stuff. Um, and also, there's a spirit whose whole deal is playing with the beast tokens, making them run around and eat people. Uh, the other tokens do all have rules. Wilds tokens. If uh, if an explore would happen in a land with wilds, the explore does not happen, and then the wilds are removed. If a build would happen in a land with a disease token, the build does not happen, and then the disease token is removed. And strife tokens are played onto specific invaders, and then the next time that invader would deal damage, they instead do not deal damage, and then the strife token is removed. Uh, so this allows us to add wilds to places where we have presence that are not blighted. It's not super relevant. Also, it would be kind of nice for the purposes of these innates if our whatever card we get had a purple symbol on it. Unfortunately, only one of these does. Absorb Corruption. Gather Blight or pay one energy to remove a Blight. And if you have two green symbols, you can do both. We don't have any cards with green symbols on them right now, so this card has one. We'd have to get another card with one before we could uh, do the second part of that. And this, Drift Down Into Slumber, Defend 1... If the land is a jungle or sands, instead defend four. And this has a purple symbol on it. It has good range. It's free. I think this is probably our uh, our guy. This is a good versatile card. Defense is powerful. Um, defend one is enough to change the balance of many encounters. Oh, the at the end of the turn, any damage that is on stuff falls off. So our, our Dahan is back to full health. I'm going to take Drift Down into Slumber. I think that's a good pull. Um, it's nice that it has a purple symbol on it, too. 
And then we get to gain another power, and I think we're going to go to the minor deck again. I want to have a good, sort of a good breadth of abilities before we start forgetting stuff. So, Disorienting Landscape. That's pretty weird. Within two range of a sacred site, push an explorer, and then if the target land is a mountain or jungle, add wilds. That's actually a pretty good card. It's cheap, it has a purple symbol on it, that's a strong competitor. Poisoned Dew, within one range of your presence, destroy an explorer, except if the land is a jungle or wetland, in which case you destroy all explorers. That's okay, it's fine. Uh, this only works on inland lands, which is to say lands that are not coastal. And it's only, it's where we have presence. Push an explorer or a town or a Dahan and generate two fear. And then if the target land has any beasts, generate an additional fear. That's a lot of fear. It lets us push stuff from inland. I mean, if we can push everything toward the coast, I think that's good. Since the coast is a place where you can't, you can't really prevent invaders from showing up, it's good to sort of concentrate them there. Although we do have to be a little careful because we don't want there to be too many invaders on, in coastal territories due to that uh, proud and mighty capital loss condition. Um, this is not a bad card, though. I like this. And Reaching Grasp. That is a weird art. Target Spirit gets plus two range with all their powers. I, that's not compelling to me at all. We have, we have plenty of coverage. So let's drop these off. I think it's really between these two. I think they're both quite good. I like adding wilds. Um, if we can, you know, push the invaders toward the coast and then add, seed wilds behind them to prevent them from moving back inland, that's pretty good. But I think there's a lot to be said for um, for generating huge amounts of fear. I know the fear card we saw wasn't great for us, but a lot of fear cards are pretty powerful. And also, you know, winning the game. I think I'm going to take Disorienting Landscape, though. It's valuable to be able to move explorers at fast speed because you can move guys out of territories where they would build. So let's do that. All right, that's our growth phase. Uh, now we get our income of one, and we can play three cards, but three cards with a total cost of one. Doesn't give us a huge number of options. So what do we have here? We have a Ravage in the Wetlands. This is, this is gonna get ravaged pretty badly. We have a Build in the Mountains, and then Unknown Explore. Huh. Well, we can play Disorienting Landscape, push this guy out of the mountains, and then we get to add a wild token to the mount uh, wild token to the mountains as well. And then do I want to play both of my zero cost cards? This will let us rearrange dudes after Yeah, yeah, this will let us rearrange dudes after the invader phase, in case stuff comes up in a way that's crummy, we can push Dahan onto them. But these guys aren't doing very much back here anyway. And Drift Down into Slumber. You know, I might not play... We might just play two cards this turn. Because Drift Down into Slumber is not really going to do anything for us. The Ravage is in a wetland. And we can defend... Yeah, defend one doesn't really do anything here. Because it will reduce their damage from three to two. Which will still mean the land blights and everything. Yeah, I'm not going to play this. We'll just play two cards this turn. So, uh, we had to pay for our cards. Then we had to pay a fast phase. So we target a, a land within two of our sacred site. We target here. Push this guy out. And then add a wilds token to it. And that's our only fast power. So let's move to the invader phase. First of all, we get an event. Please don't be terrible. Okay, at Terra level 1, Cultural Assimilation. On each board, in a land with exactly one Dahan that has or is adjacent to a city, replace that Dahan with a town. Oh no! Oh no! That sucks. That our, our people are assimilating. That's going to make it harder for us to do the thing. And then Beasts Attack. Each beast deals 2 damage. Remove any token that destroys a town or a city. That is life-saving. Yeah, I will absolutely allow our beast to trade himself for this town. That's great. Uh, that generates a fear because the town is destroyed. Yeah, that was really good. And then on each board, choose a land with at least two Dahan and at least two buildings. 
Each Dahan destroys a building, but then add a blight. Uh, there are no such lands, so we don't, we don't get to do that part. But yeah, that beast attack was very good. Very, very clutch for us. Um, so there is a fair amount of variance in the game. And once you've played it once or twice, you know what kind of effects are likely to show up. Beasts are going to tend to like deal damage or fear. Um, there's a fair number of cards that cause Dahan to defend the land they're in, you know, things like that. Um, it's it's a sort of a thin enough band of variants that you can at least play around it. And I've found that it doesn't, it, it never makes me feel like, oh man, I was totally screwed that game, I never had a chance. Alright, so that was the event phase, we don't have any fear cards, we move to the Ravage. Uh, here, this explorer deals one damage, one damage isn't enough to do anything. Then there's a build, except there are no invaders. Ah, but the Kingdom of England's indentured servants earn land effect unfortunately means that this does get, because of the cultural assimilation, this does get a town built in it. That's unfortunate. Stupid cultural assimilation. Uh, and then we have an exploration. Oh, that's bad. Okay, so that symbol in the middle of that card means that we have triggered the stage two escalation effect. The, the invaders are coming on strong. So on each board that has any buildings, build in the land with the most buildings. Well, I don't want to build here, because we're about to have a Ravage here. So let's do a build here. There are not more towns than cities, so we build a town. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't build. The next time you would build, the disease token is removed. It cancels the build. And then we explore to the jungles, uh, and sadly, this happens. I move the cards over. So there's there's a reckoning coming. This is going to accumulate a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm really worried about this space. It's going to get really ugly over here. Okay, and then we have our slow powers. So we don't have the symbols to activate either of these. So we just get Voice of Thunder. We can push for Dahan from a place, or we can pick a place where there are invaders and then generate two fear. And that would get us a card. But I think we definitely want to push our Dahan out. So... There's going to be a Ravage here. We could use Words of Warning to make that Ravage not deal any damage, and then our Dahan would kill the town in response. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and target uh, Voice of Thunder here. I think these Dahan need to sort of get into the game. Do I want to have them just pick up all my stuff and... Because our card that targets within a, within range of a sacred site, uh, within two of a sacred site, if our sacred site is here, we can hit every space on the board. Yeah, I'm just going to have all these dudes move to here. And they're going to take... Each two of them are going to take a power disc with them. Okay. Decent, decent out, output here. So we almost certainly want to play Words of Warning next turn. I think... For our growth effect, we probably want add a presence, gain an energy, or gain four energy. So we add this presence uh, within one. That'll give us a purple symbol. Uh, we have three card plays, so we could actually get one of our powers to be fast if we wanted it to be fast. Um, if we wanted to do that, we'd have to play Manifestation of Power and Glory, and then also Words of Warning, because these are the two yellow symbols we have available. We need to pick up more yellow cards um but that would let us destroy a town for every two to han in the target land we gotta get some to han over here so if we played well words of warning will also trigger in our uh, gather the warriors which allows us to move a bunch of guys around Allows us to gather a Dahan for each purple we have. So we could target this and gather quite a few Dahan over, because we'll have four purple. Alright. Let's um so this is our this is our growth effect. We gotta actually place this presence somewhere. So it can be up to one range away from where we already have presence. Um We probably just wanna make another sacred site. I guess. I'm not sure where though. Yeah, let's do it here. Because I'm thinking, um, with Manifestation of Power and Glory, there's going to end up being quite a few buildings in this place. 
We want there to be as many of our power discs here as possible so the manifestation of power and glory causes a ton of damage. So we also get four energy when we do that. And then we get one energy for our income. And the next time we move a power disc off, we're going to be up at two energy per turn. So we'll at least, uh, at least be getting things a little better. We definitely want to play these two cards. So that's four of our power spoken for. And then, do we want to play Drift Down into Slumber this turn? Words of Warning is already going to cover the damage from here. I don't think we do. I think we hold Drift Down into Slumber again. Right, there's actually no... Oh, well, if we don't play this, we can't use these powers as though they were fast. But I guess the question is, do we want to do that anyway? This power requires there to be multiple Dahan in the target land. I think the answer to that question is no. I think we want to do words of warning, have this stuff happen, have our Dahan wipe out this town of retaliation for the zero damage ravage, and then we want to rebalance everything after the invader turn when we have more information. Yeah. And we don't have the power to play Sudden Ambush. I would play Sudden Ambush. Because it would be really cool to be able to destroy this explorer before he builds. But sadly, we have no way of doing that. Um, if we don't play Words of Warning, we could instead play Sudden Ambush and then Drift Down into Slumber. Ah, uh, but we don't... I was thinking that we could use Lead the Furious Assault to remove this town before the invader phase, because we'll be fast. But if we do that, do it that way, we don't have the yellow symbols. No, I think we stick with the plan, which means we're not playing Drift Down into Slumber this turn. We'll just hold it. Okay, so, uh, fast powers. Do we have any fast powers? We have words of warning. We are going to choose to defend three in this territory. Also, Dahan and that land deal damage simultaneously with invaders. Could end up mattering, depending on the event, I suppose. And then we're into events, so. New species spread. New plants and animals brought by the invaders damage the local ecology. You can, for each board, discard the top minor power. If it is fast, add Blight to a land that has buildings. Okay, that wouldn't be the end of the world. Or we can transmute the worst of the species. It costs four energy per player, aided by white. So what aided by white means is that we can forget a power, like this one, that has white in the cost, to reduce, or has white among its elements, to reduce the cost of this thing by four. Or we could discard cards that had white on them but from our hand to reduce the cost by two and what it does is it generates a fear per player and then on each board add a beast token to a land with buildings hmm do we want to forget disorienting landscape to buy that effect because a fear token right now is a fear card hmm That's pretty good, and it means we don't have to, we definitely don't have to, oh, if we do the top option, we're going to see this card again. After resolving this card, return it to the event deck under the top two cards. I think we'd better transmute the worst of the species. So we'll just go ahead and forget this power that I think is quite good, but I think this is an important situation to do this thing. So we're going to generate a fear, which earns us a fear card. And then on each board, add a beast to a land that has some buildings. I'm going to add the beast here, because I think we're going to handle this place pretty well after uh, all of the fighting is said and done. The beast might be able to eat some of these dudes. And then on half of the boards rounded up, add a disease token to a land that has both uh, Dahan and invaders, and then do two damage to Dahan there. So I'm not 100% sure how this works. You're going to have to bear with me for a second as I check the rules. Does our defend only defend against damage dealt by invaders? Let's see here. Where's the where's the rules for defend? It does say whenever invaders deal damage to target land. So we might lose a Dahan here. And if, if we do, that will kind of suck. Let me see if there's a clarification. In the book here. 
in the book for the expansion, because the events are an expansion component. Uh, it sort of looks like there is no... Here we go. When spirit powers damage the Dahan, you may choose how that damage is allocated, just like when you damage invaders. When events or invaders damage the Dahan, you must destroy Dahan as efficiently as possible. You cannot choose to hurt undamaged Dahan to spare wounded ones. And... Okay. Defend says, defend says damage dealt by invaders. So, sadly, um... This kills a Dahan. The two damage here kills a Dahan. And that triggers our... Oh no, it doesn't trigger Sworn to Victory. Sworn to Victory only triggers off of Invaders Ravaging Land. Okay, good. That's important. So, uh, that is the event processed all the way. Nope, it's not. Each spirit with at least two Dahan among all its lands gains an energy. Hey, we have way more than two Dahan amongst all our lands. Free energy. Neat. And then we get that Fear card. Each player may choose a land that has Dahan or is adjacent to at least five Dahan. Invaders do not ravage there this turn. Man, that's not useful. We really want invaders to ravage here, because if they don't ravage, we don't get to fight back. So we choose not to choose a land for this, and then we enter the invader phase. So they ravage here. Their entire ravage is prevented by our defend effect, and then our dudes fight back, destroying the city or destroying the town, rather, and generating a fear because they destroyed a town. Then we build. Unfortunate. Then we flip over this card, and it has that symbol on it again, which means in the land with the most stuff, we build a thing. And then we explore wetlands. All right. Slow powers. So, the first thing we're going to do is gather the warriors, right? Because we have a red symbol. So we can gather up to one to Han per purple we have, and then push up to one to Han per yellow we have. We are on three purples, two from our cards and one from our presence. So we're going to gather three to Han to here. One, two, three. And then the question is, do I want to take power discs with us. Right now we'll deal six damage with this effect. In order to clear the place we need three, five, seven, eight, nine. So if we take one power disc with us from here, now we're dealing nine damage. We'll kill everything. Um, I will choose not to do anything else. We'll, we'll not push anybody. Okay, and then we do Manifestation of Power and Glory in this land. So the first thing we do is get a fear. Then, each Dahan deals damage equal to the number of your presence. Three Dahan dealing three damage each is a dead city, two dead towns, and two dead explorers. And a dead city and two dead towns is four fear. So we add these two fear, flush the pool, and then add two fear again. That plays this fear card, and now Terror Level 2. So at Terror Level 2, the victory condition is there are no towns or cities on the map. We no longer care about explorers. If we can get rid of their towns and cities, the uh, explorers will flee. If we get through these next four cards, the victory condition becomes just there are no cities. Uh, we're actually pretty close. We could totally, we can totally deal with these. There's going to be a Ravage. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of building and stuff. We're, I don't know. I don't know that we can build, uh, deal with all this stuff. I'm less confident now than I was moments ago. <laughs> all right, well, that's going to be the end of our turn, right? We did all of our slow powers. We don't have the symbols. Oh, no, we do have the symbols to activate this, but we don't have the things. That we don't have... There's no place where there's a town and also two to Han. So, yeah, we're done with the turn. Start of a new turn. Now the question is, do we want to reclaim because we don't we're not really playing a lot of cards this turn let me think here we're building in wetlands so sudden ambush played here will allow this to hunt to kill that explorer we could also kill an explorer down here but it doesn't matter so much there's going to be a ravage in the jungle as well that's going to place a blight we're going to be hard pressed to prevent that from happening actually no we're not 
This this prevents that from happening. We just play this. So I guess the question is, do I need to reclaim this turn, or can I wait to reclaim next turn? We have a power that costs zero, don't we? Yeah, we have Voice of Thunder. Maybe we should just reclaim this turn. Maybe there's no reason to wait. And I think I'm only going to spend two power this turn. We're going to be in pretty okay shape after we do that. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, we'll do Reclaim. We'll grab some new minor powers. Actually, we'll see. We'll, we'll gain a new minor power, and then we'll see if we if we drew a power that we don't particularly love, I might gain a major at this point. Because I'm starting to feel like we're coming online. So what do we have here? Call to Tend. In a land with Dahan, remove a Blight or push up to three Dahan. That's pretty cool. Doesn't have a purple symbol on it, though. That's a concern for me. It doesn't have purple, yellow, or orange. It's going to be tough for us to take a card that has none of those. Visions of Fiery Doom. Okay, with speed, a push generates a fear, and if you have two, uh, two orange, it generates an additional fear. That's a pretty good card, actually. That, that fits nicely into a lot of the things we're doing. Tormenting Rotflies. Add a Blight. It only targets sand and wetlands. Add a Blight or fear. Potentially a lot of fear. And it does have a purple. And here we have Savage Maw Beasts. Within one range of a sacred site, if the target land is jungle or wetland, fear and damage. And then also, if you have three red, damage. We do have two red cards already. So we could turn this on sometimes. Our red cards are yellow and orange. That's a shame. If they were yellow and yellow, uh, that card's orange. So we'd be able to do this. That's not bad, though. It's slow, but just straight-up damage is awfully powerful. And two damage is enough to kill a town. You could, just, you could kill a wetland town or jungle town, and it costs zero. It kills a town for zero energy. I don't know if we can take Visions of Fiery Doom in the face of that. Yeah, let's take Savage Mobbies. I like that a lot. So my feeling is that we may be don't have a power that I'm willing to sacrifice and also we can't afford a lot of minor powers still our, our energy generation is not super great I think we're doing pretty well let's keep let's keep getting cheap cards I want more options promises of protection within two range of a sacred site gather up to two to Han to Han have plus two health while in target land so this allows us to uh, allows us to get to Han into fighting positions I like that a lot. And it has a yellow and a red. This is fast. Push a, push an explorer or two damage. Okay. That's compelling. And it has purple yellow. Elemental boon. Target spirit gains three elements of their choice. If you target another spirit, you also gain the chosen elements. That's pretty cool. I've not seen that before. And Shadows of the Burning Forest, in a place where you have presence and also there are invaders, two fear, and then if it's a mountain or jungle, push an explorer and a town. I kind of think Promises of Protection seems good. Delusions of Danger also seems very good. The ability to push explorers out of place at fast speed uh, is sometimes very, very valuable. Yeah, I kind of want to take this. And it's purple-yellow. Like, that's really good. It's a nice cheap card. I think that's a good growth phase for us. So now income, we get one power. And now let's figure this out. So we can play Drift Down into Slumber. That'll deal with this. We can play Sudden Ambush. That'll deal with this. So let's just think for a second here. If we do these two things, if we played a card that was yellow and orange, we'd get to lead the Furious Assault as well. But our only yellow and orange card is way too expensive. What if we played, instead of Drift Down into Slumber, what if we played Words of Warning? Because we do have three energy. This will let us defend three here, and then we just have to play an orange, which we could do for free. And that'll give us access to... Oh, no, wait, we have to play a yellow, sorry. 
play a yellow, and that'll give us access to lead the Furious Assault, help us get a building off the table. They're building in the wetlands. So we do Voice of Thunder, so we want this to be a slow power. That doesn't seem bad. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it that way. So that's going to take all three of our energy. And then during the fast phase, we have enough purples that we could play either of these powers as fast powers. So this one I think we might actually want to. Right, we could target within one range of where you have presence. So we could target this space. We could gather up to four to Han and then push up to two of them. So let's do that. Let's gather two to Han and then push two to Han. Oh, actually, we had to do that because Words of Warning requires to Han in the territory. So we'll do this. We'll play Words of Warning here. Do I want them to bring presents with them? Probably. There's not really a reason for me to have three presents in a single territory. Yeah, they'll, they'll truck a presence with them. And then... Actually, maybe I want to target this territory, have them move through here, and bring a presence from here and drop it there. So that we have... Um, we have a sacred site that's adjacent to a new space that this one wasn't adjacent to. Actually, two new spaces. Yeah, we'll do it that way. I'll target this territory, pull two guys over here, one of them will bring my presence, and then push them out, and they won't carry the presence with them again. Okay, so that's good. That's words of warning and gather the warriors processed, and then also we get sudden ambush. I'm going to do it here. I will choose not to gather a Dahan, and then each Dahan destroys an explorer. Okay, I think we're we're getting them under control. So that's all of our fast powers. Let's move on to the next phase. So the first thing we do is new event. Healthy Island. During the next normal ravage, each town does plus one damage. Uh, that is not a problem for us. That's fine. Then each beast destroys one explorer. Add one add one beast to a board with that one. Okay. Not super relevant. And then uh. Add a Dahan to a jungle or wetland with Dahan. Well, here maybe? We don't need to add a Dahan here. These guys have this under control. Oh, no, we actually really want to add a Dahan here, don't we? Because we want to be able to push two Dahan with Voice of Thunder and then have them lead the Furious Assault somewhere. Yes, yeah, so this is really where we want to do that. I think things are working out very well for us. Then we have a fear card, and we are now at terror level 2, remember. So, each player adds a strife in a different land with at least two invaders, then each invader takes one damage per strife that it has. Interesting. One strife in a land with at least two invaders, and then each invader takes a damage for each strife it has. There's no reason really for me to do this here. The, the Dahan will handle this. So I guess I just I use it to kill an explorer somewhere, but I'm not sure. I don't know if it even matters where. I'll do it here, I guess. So the strife immediately goes away because that invader is gone. Yeah, strife is connected to specific invaders. The reason I did it that way is we're about to have four health worth of. Explorer, or four health worth of invaders in this territory, but we're also going to have four health, four damage worth of Dahan, so it's under control, I think. Okay, uh, and then it is invader time. So first, they ravage. Here, they ravage. They do four damage because of heavy farming, but three of it is prevented. One damage doesn't really do anything meaningful, and then the Dahan retaliate, killing them all, which generates a Saphir. Then there's a build in the wetlands. We weren't able to stop this from happening. And then mountains. Uh, so a build occurs because of the symbol. Hmm. 
Hmm. I think I want to put it here rather than here. And the reason for that is we're about to move some Dahan in here, and then we're going to um, we're going to lead the Furious Assault and destroy this town. And then there will be five health worth of invaders and four damage worth of Dahan. We can probably make this work somehow. So I think we're going to execute the build action here. And then there's a mountain explorer, and uh, no, no explorer happens. They, the explorers hack away the wilds. Not bad though. Not a bad uh, turn for us. There are four fear cards left on that stack. We're, we are not generating enough fear. All right, then slow powers. So we have lead the furious assault and voice of thunder coming. I think we want to target this land. We want to push these to Han down to here. And then, oh, we, we have to carry at least one of our power with us. Or one of our presence, rather. Because Lead the Furious Assault has zero range. And then with two white and a yellow, we destroy one town for every two to Han that are present. And destroying a town generates us a fear, which earns us a card for next turn. Honestly, this is the smoothest I've ever had a game of this go. Alright, end of the turn, we do that. And now, I think we are probably doing one presence and four energy, because we need energy. So one presence can get us an extra income. It can also unveil the reclaim one. So every turn during our spirit phase, at any time during our spirit phase, we can choose to take one card back out of the discard pile if we uncover this. Um, it feels like... Maybe I want to take this guy. Energy's a real problem. Yeah. So we're doing this growth option. We're going to take this guy and we're going to put it anywhere within one range. Oh, this dude is no longer damaged. Uh, I'm going to put it... Do I need a sacred site here? Savage Maw Beasts. Uh, I'm going to put the sacred site here, I guess. My Sacred Sight card only needs to be within one, and that's the only one I have, right? Yeah. So yeah, we'll make our Sacred Sight over here. And then... We will gain our four energy. Plus two energy. Let's take it as a three and three ones, because we're definitely going to spend some of it. So what do we want to play? Manifestation of Power and Glory seems pretty alright. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. We gotta deal with this, right? They have a 5 damage Ravage. They're probably just going to get a good Ravage off. I think we maybe just have to allow it. Hmm. We do have... The symbols necessary to lead the Furious Assault and also to gather the warriors. Maybe what I want to do is... They're going to Ravage here. They're not going to do any building. We successfully prevented the building. Maybe what I want to do is just like go really deep on fear. Hmm. Savage Maw Beasts will allow us to... So hold on, let's let's put this down. We'll generate some fear targeting this land post-combat. That's an orange, so we need a yellow and an orange. Here's what I'm thinking. If we can... We have a red, right? If we get to four purples, oh, I guess if I play this, we don't get to four purples. I think if we get to four purples, we can at least pull our Dahan out of here, let them blight the land, not that I can really do about it, and then worry about trying to kill them all next turn. In which case, Manifestation of Power and Glory is pretty weak, actually. Because we don't have a way to move them back afterward. If I, if I use this to move them out, I can't use it to move them back. Uh, if we could generate another Dahan here, we could use Lead the Fierce Assault to destroy the city, but there's not really a way to do that. And if we had more defense... Man, I don't know. 
if we defend one and then we push a guy out with this then they'll deal four damage we'll take three one of our nahan will die but the other one will survive he'll fight back and then Savage Maw Beast. He'll fight back, he'll do two damage to the city, and then we can use Savage Maw Beast to deal the other one damage. So maybe we just sort of stand and take it. Um, we're going to lose a lot of presence, though. We're going to lose the presence here, because they're going to do damage enough to blight this. And then because a Dahan died, we'll also lose an adjacent presence. It'll be this one, because we want to keep the Sacred Sight live for Maw Beasts. Yeah, I think that's right. And then we'll like do Delusions of Danger because we need it for the push. And this, I think we end up just banking all this energy. I think it's good to do that. And then next turn we'll do a Reclaim and we'll take a Major Power. But we can use all this energy to play. I think that feels right. We're, we're taking some losses here, but we're going to be able to get a city off the table. We do not get to do any of our things fast, and we don't get to do Lead the Furious Assault at all. On the whole, though, I don't think it's a bad plan. So the first thing we do is drift down into Slumber. We're going to play one defense here. Then we're going to Delusions of Danger. Targeting this space, we're going to push a guy to here, I guess. Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Uh, yeah, so push one explorer. And then this will happen during slow phase, and this will happen during slow phase, and now it's time for stuff. So we have a fear card. The fear card might help us out. We also have an event card, which totally might screw us. Let's find out. On inland land on each board, replace an explorer with a town. Ah, there are no explorers on inland lands. We're controlling things too well. Next, stricken. Invaders do not ravage in lands with disease or strife. Not relevant. Then each player may push one town or uh, explorer from a land with Dahan. Pushing this explorer doesn't do anything, right? Because we're still going to take three damage. Uh, we're only defending one, so it's still going to be enough to kill the Dahan. But let's go ahead and push him, because if this card gives us access to even one point of defense, all of a sudden, we're fine here. Yeah. All right, let's hope that was good enough. What do we get? It's Terror Level 2. Each player adds one Strife in a land with Dahan or Growth, or, or Dahan or uh, Disease or Beast. For the rest of this turn, Invaders have minus one health per Strife, to a minimum of one. <coughs> That's phenomenal. That's very, very good. Right, because we take the Strife and we add it to this city and now it doesn't deal damage this turn and we're going to destroy it oh that's awesome that's really really good what a good event or what a good fear card fear cards are sometimes very powerful so we are now uh in ravage so ravage this guy deals no damage discards his strife token then our dahan fight back and obliterate the city Gaining us two fear. And then um, build. There's no build. And then we explore coastal lands. Interesting. That's the first time I've seen that card. Okay, well that card does not have the dreaded symbol. We place an explorer in each coastal land. Because of course all coastal lands are coastal. That's what the word coastal means. We've gotten to the three cards. So the Phase 2 cards have the symbols on them, and apparently sometimes are just all of the Coastal Lands. The Phase 3 cards have two different terrain types on them. They can be very dangerous if you've not managed to corral enough of your uh, dudes. Okay, but we are, like, totally kicking ass here. I think we're going to win. So that's the end of that. Then we have our Slow, uh, slow Phase. So Slow Phase powers are in target a land within range of your Sacred Site. Do a damage and a fear if it's a jungle. That's what we will do. Wait, no, 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 no. We, sorry, within one of our sacred site. We do it here. Kill this explorer. So that way if, um, 
That way, if a build comes up, wetland. Oh, no, it's, the build is all coastal lands. That's actually going to be a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, we definitely want to clear one of these lands. So I'm happy with that. Uh, we gain a fear. And then we have an innate power. We have uh, three purple and one yellow. So we can gather up to three purple, or gather up to three to Han, and then push one to Han. I'm going to use it here, I think, and gather these guys. And then we could push one of them. I might. Because we're going to need to put some Dahan together to make stuff happen here. So we'll push one of those guys to here. And I'm not going to transfer any power or anything. And I think I want... Actually, it was gather three Dahan. I gathered two from here. I'm actually going to gather one of these guys to this place as well. And then we'll still do the one push. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that turn. I think that was good. So let's, uh... Let's new turn. So, discard all this stuff. We're going to reclaim this turn. I guess I can just put these in my hand instead of putting them in the discard pile. And let's gain a major power. Wait. Let's gain a minor power first. So that we have more information on what we want to discard. Encompassing Ward, defend two in every land where target spirit has presence. That's actually pretty cool. We have a lot of presence. Uh, portents of Disaster, within one range of a sacred site, two fear. Next time an invader is destroyed in target land this turn, one fear. Three fear is pretty good for a card that costs zero and has purple and yellow symbols on it. Interesting. Sap the strength of multitudes, defend five in a place where you have presence. If you have a purple, increase this power's range by one, and we always do. And then Dark and Tangled Woods, two fear if the land is a mountain or a jungle, defend three. Those are all pretty good, actually. Uh, you know my feelings on fear, especially fear generated at fast speed, uh, allowing you to dump fear cards into that turn's invader phase can be really powerful. We're going to have a pretty ugly Ravage in a second here. Wait, are we? Hold on, all I have to do is play Lead the Furious Assault at fast and we win. So I just have to play um, yellow, yellow, orange, and purple. Yeah, we actually have won the game already. This is totally unnecessary. Right, because I just play like this... And then another yellow card that is also purple. And then another card that is purple. Yeah, and uh, nothing we do aside from that matters. Because now we have four purples. We take this power at fast speed. Two yellow and an orange. Destroy a town for every two Dahan in the land. We do this. And then that's the victory condition. Our current, current victory condition is no towns or cities. So actually, I'm not even going to bother resolving this. Because we totally just won. That was embarrassingly easy, unless I forgot something, and I totally might have forgotten something, because there's a lot of stuff that happens during this game. But that's uh, that's Spirit Island for you guys. I hope that uh, I hope that, that was interesting. If this game looks cool to you, you know, um, please consider buying it, because if we don't buy board games, people will stop making them. And right now, people are making a lot of really cool board games. Uh, like I said, it plays it plays very similarly with more people. You just add more boards. You know, they uh, they fit together in a variety of ways. They snap together along this edge. Right, like that. And they also uh, like this. And so with different players, you use different snapping together layouts. And each, each spirit gets to declare one board, their board. And then things proceed pretty much the same way. Um, there are four different uh, nemeses with you know multiple different levels of difficulty adding lots of different rules there are eight scenarios you can play that add all kind of stuff different victory conditions different uh, loss conditions and stuff there's just like there's a ton of game here and if you ever play co-op games i think this is probably like a really good purchase uh yeah so that's going to be it for us for today thank you guys so much for watching if you would like to see any other solo board game stuff, please, you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, hook me up with good board game suggestions. I saw a number of people were interested in Mage Knight, 
and I took a look at that, and it looks complicated. I will learn it. I'll figure it out uh, for you guys. But if there's anything else you'd like to see, you know, please leave it in the comments below, because I have no idea what kind of cool stuff is out there. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.